Hello and welcome to a brand new series uh, titled uh, Turning Winter into Summer. Um, this is the wackiest uh, reference I think I've given you, but the reason I'm doing that is to challenge yourself to say, hey, you might come across a reference, but uh, it may be the wrong season, or there's something in it you don't like, but there's some basic shape and abstract design in it that you really like. So that's what I saw in this, and you may see it too. So, uh, with that, I challenge you to do part one, two, and three. Um, so today, blocking, we had to come up with, uh, coming up with where are these shapes going to be on this canvas, and then filling it in with value color. The important thing is, it's fall out here in Colorado, and it's beautiful, so get outside and paint. Painting from nature is going to be a great teacher to you. The role I have is to, uh, how to deal with a lot of problems you come across with design and uh, mixture and uh, what tools to use, and that's my role. The important thing is you've got to carry this on and get outside and start doing your own research also. Okay, enough of me preaching. Let's get into part one, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Hello and welcome to part one of changing um, winter to uh, summer or spring, uh, depending on the type of uh, season you like. But I think this one we're going to try to make it more spring summery. And um, maybe if we want to make it spring, we can put some snow in there. But if you look at the reference, it looks like, wow, what the heck is this? It's just a bunch of snow and trees with, it looks like, um, the uh, base of a stream that's all covered in snow. And uh, why I'm doing this uh, with you all is because sometimes you're inspired by something, uh, a shape, and that you um, don't particularly like uh, the season it's in, but you want to change it, but you like the shape. And with that shape, challenge yourself as to what you can do with it uh, to make a um, good painting out of it. Um, so I found this um, location up in, uh, in Utah a few years back. I painted it before and I think uh, what I'm going to do is uh, try to do some improvements on that and um, but just do a little study. I think I have a looks like a 9 by 15 or 16 something like that. And I'm painting on linen today. Very good. Okay, I've got my gamsaw ready. I've got my paints ready. And we are almost ready to go. What I want to do today is block in. And with block in, I want to cover this whole canvas with uh, shapes and value colors. So that's the, the main object to do in the next uh, 29, 30 minutes. So I've got my basic uh, colors down here, my three blues, my two reds, my four warms. I should be adding maybe bismuth too, but I didn't put that on. I didn't think I'd be using it today. I've got a transparent oxide red, a transparent oxide brown. I've got a cool gray, and I've got a titanium white. Over here I have my old trusty rut gut viridian. All right, so I think what I want to do is just pull out something that's a little bit stiff. It looks like a number two rosemary uh, classic long flat. It's, it's stiff, and I just want to figure out where the shapes are going to be um, with this. And then with a different brush, I'm going to fill it in with value colors. All right, I got my extra paints off to the side just in case I need them. And I think it's now time to uh, challenge ourselves to uh, come up with a really neat little painting uh, with a really difficult uh, reference. But the good thing about this reference, it has great shapes. So uh, let's go with a blue, transparent oxide red. Blue, transparent oxide red.
I just want enough product on there to let me figure out where the shapes are going to be. So if I'm looking for a shape, I need to kind of figure out uh, a foundation line. And uh, this is kind of a different angled painting. But I do see a, a block of trees in the back that's kind of angled. We can use that. See, there's... This would be some sort of... It's a continuation of things that are going through the painting that's all dark. So I could use that as a foundation. And then it looks like the... There's a triangle down here at the bottom. And then there's a bank on the side. Looks like there's a river coming in. Or a, that kind of goes off to one side, I think. To the left. And then... Over here is a bigger triangle with some... Oh, I think some changes going on here. So it kind of comes this way from large to small to large. Then another bank that comes in here and goes this way. So these are banks here. These are flats through here. And let's see here. I'll need to have something here. Don't know if I need everything's quite so pronounced. And now I need some big trees. That's going to be something that's going to challenge me to think about this, to get this, these trees in here. So, these trees are big anchors, so getting them in the right place is going to be really, really important. So, I'm going to put some big, big boys right here that go right off the canvas. They're down here doing their thing, and really really important and then some other trees that are coming in behind them so we have we can figure out the tops here in a minute but that's a good place for for some trees I think I need a little bit more brown in that mixture so I added some more transparent oxide red in there here and then bigger ones over in here. So if you've been following me on my previous paintings and doing these things, you can say, okay, I get this. We're at a point now where we can do a little Bob Rossi. What I mean by that is you just kind of make things up as you go. And that's what we're doing on this. I think we could probably use a small tree in this little triangle right here. And uh, let's put some vegetation coming over the edge here. All right, stick with trees. Okay, so... Now we need some background trees, and they would be fellas back here that would kind of say, they're not quite as big, but they're important players. And we'll put some up in here. And let's see, let's put some on this bank now, which would be larger. You can start to see how your composition is coming together. So get back here and take a look and see if 
you're still doing okay. And I'm staying very busy. Yes. All right, let's some smaller guys in here and bigger guys here. You can see how these just little drawing brushes kind of helping with this type of small canvas. I think if I had a bigger canvas I'd probably be using a little bit bigger drawing uh, brush, but I think for now it's working. Okay, so we can have... I want to just fill in a few... Let's put these lower. Well, now we need to think about these background trees where they're going to be, and they are important. So let's add some gray to this mixture and some blue. And let me get some lighter turp in here, some more gray, a little bit of transparent oxide red, and more turp. I'm sorry, it's GAM salt, it's a solvent, and too dark. Let's thin it out, thin it out. And there it is. Thin, thin, thin. And as it goes back to the right, I'm going to make it smaller. And as you can see, as it goes to the left, it gets larger. All right. Now we need to do more construction here on this, on this bank. So, okay, I figured out I want to have some banks going this way. I have this triangle coming this way, but then a bank right here, bank here. But what's going on back here? Well, I haven't decided that yet. So let's figure that out. So let's put an edge here, and then over here we'll put another Get a bank coming out here, even smaller. All right, so we ought to put a stream in there too. And this looks like it needs a break in it. Put a breaks. Well, let's um, really define that by saying it's some sort of a brown. So let's go uh, transparent oxide red. Let's get a little orange in there. A little red, most of the transparent oxide. We'll get a little bit of this blue in there. Really thin it out. And we will kind of define this area. Just so we can kind of keep track of what we're talking about. It's too dark. Don't have to overdo it. Get some turp in there. Just to, if you want to make it lighter, just add a little bit more turp. As you can see, I haven't added any white yet.
All right, so that is our beginning. All right, making sense so far? Yes, say yes, thank you. All right, how about we figure out some sort of an abstract shape for the um, stream bottom? I know there's, you can't see it, but I'm just making it up. So just uh, think of Zorro. Here's what I mean by that. So Zorro, when I was growing up, was a program on TV. And I can show you, had a, a Z. And that's how we define a, an abstract shape here. Okay, so we'll kind of define that as a, think of that as a stream bottom or something of that sort. So, let's keep working on this and see what kind of problems we've got. And I've just seen a few. So we've got this big triangle here. So let's put a break in it here. And put some, I don't know, something growing in there. And I think we have, it's too wet. And let's put some shrubbery and stuff like that coming out of some of these little outlets here. This seems to be a problem area for me. And let's fill in a few areas with vegetation. And let's bring this down this way. It's a little too steep there, right? So I'm making it less steep. Okay. And then we'll have some sort of a stream bottom in there. Now I've got these big areas in here, and what I could do is probably do a little bit more imagination here. If, looking at my reference, too, I have bushes and things peeking through the snow. But down here I want to have a different type of vegetation that's along the, the bases of the streams here. Oh, I missed a, a little detail that might help the viewer figure out what's going on, and that is that this bank is turning this way. There we go. And Bring this down just a little bit. All right. And let's put a break in here. All right. So now, since we are trying to get this thing done in 30 minutes, a block in. We have spent a lot of time trying to figure things out, you know, making things up. And that takes some brain power and imagination. But I'm cleaning my palette because I'm changing over. I want to go to some, maybe some sky colors and, and things like that. So, um, looks like it's a pretty gray sky in our reference. So, but uh, let's, uh, let's just make some phthalo and white. Try to brighten up this painting a little bit and put in some sort of sky sky design. Changing paper towels, that one got a little too full. And now I'm going to, things, things are kind of leaning this way, so I'm going to bring in a different angle of the sky kind of 
angling the other way. And we can kind of pretend that the white canvas is our, is our cloud. I talk about with my in-studio students the importance of the 50-50 problem. If you have 50% sky, 50% uh, clouds, or darks and lights, I always want to try to make one a little bit more dominant. I don't know why that works for me, but it does. Um, I'm going to add some Viridian to this mixture. And I'm going to put some of this Viridian blue just mixed in here on the, more of the base of things, more on the horizon. And with the clouds, I'm just going to make a little bit of gray in here. So here's a white plus a touch of cold gray. Not to too much. And we will put that in. I put in too much. And I'll just put some in right here. And I'll get a little bit more defined near the horizon because I want to flush out these trees a little bit more before I commit to where exactly everything is in the sky. So I can eliminate a bunch of contamination later. All right, let's get into this um, bank area. And uh, let's see what we can do with what we have on our palette. So let's get some blue-green going on, get some white here. And we will get some uh, Hansa yellow. I'm sorry, no. yeah, Hansa yellow deep. Get a little bit of cobalt. Cobalt. And it looks like a pretty starting to turn a very light green, yellowy green. There it is. And now we're going to add some white to it. And a little bit more white. Touch of Viridian. Touch of Viridian. Come on, get out there. I didn't make a lot of it. It's going to be a base color. But that's going to be a good color. Okay, I'm going to change to a softer brush. It's a um, number four rosemary long flat, two seven nine, and I'm going to get some turp in here. Now this is a little bit of like paint between the lines, but you can be a little sloppy too. I mean, try to soften up your edges. Don't make them too strong, hard. And you can see here that I'm filling in my, my banks. Let's see how I'm doing on time. I better hurry. And I'm going to do the rest of this off camera on these greens I made, but I'll get more careful here because you can see I'm just getting in the easy spots without contaminating right now. And I'll get in with a little bit smaller brush off camera and fill that in and encourage you to do that for homework. So let's. Um, Think about a different green down here. Maybe add um, more Hansa yellow and uh, a little bit of transparent oxide red. 
and come up with a slightly different base color down in here. And what this does, it kind of shows that, oh, there's a little bit of a murky, I don't know if this is mud or grass or what, but it's kind of in between the both. And you can see I switched back to the smaller brush because I'm working around all this abstract shapes. I almost said my Zorro design. Let me take a look here. I think what I see is a problem area in my design. So I want to see if I can still fix that off while we still have some camera time left. This tree here seems a little too too tall, so I'm going to bring him down. Yep. It's getting contaminated with that stuff I just put on. But I will bring these guys down. So it doesn't look like it's such a severe slope. See, I'm going to change the slope here on these guys and see how just that the angle of that slope is going to help out. Okay next what I'm going to do is darken the trees in front because they are anything closer is going to be darker, it's going to have more chroma in it and I want to make sure I have a good base design. So that's what I'm going to be doing here with these trees in front, not the guys in the back row. All right, so let's get back now. Since I think I fixed that design problem a little bit better, I'm going to go in here with this little brush and work in the stream bottom here a little bit. I'm trying to be careful, but I'm not delicate. I mean, it doesn't hurt to kind of soften the edges of the dark stuff you come up to the edge of. Okay, and Let's go back to the lighter green. And I'm going to get a, looks like a number two rosemary long flat. Two seven nine or eight. I'm not sure which one it is. It's too small for me to see, and I can get a little bit more personal and up close with getting this blocking done. There's a lot of ways to start a painting. This is one that I find is useful to students to think about seeing the whole picture. See, instead of working one area too, too much, you kind of work the whole deal at this stage. There's plenty of time in part two to get a little bit more intimate in certain areas and spend more time. But it does give you, you know, a frame of reference to work on the whole picture, you know, because I'm always thinking about balance, okay, because we're going into the next phase, which is balance. Should probably be more tomorrow. I'm probably getting into that a little bit, that stage a little bit now. A little bit brown here, I think, and I got a little lazy down here. Better clean that brush again. All right, so I'm going to go back into my big white areas and see what I can do about it. You can see when I want to soften an edge, I just kind of go up and whoop, soften the edge above it just by going whoop. 
Now if your brush is too loaded, it, excuse me, that's my timer. Um, it's going to be too much. You kind of have to have a drier brush and um, kind of, you know, squeeze your stuff out of it. And if the stuff below it is wet, it can kind of soften what's on top. Well, uh, I think we've covered just about what we wanted to cover here today. And I want to thank you for being here for part one of changing winter into summer. Well, I think we're going to change this into spring. I'd like to maybe get a few pockets of snow in there. But um, there you go. That's uh, part one block in thin, thin value colors. And... Um, now we shall be ready to launch into the rest of this painting in part two and three. Doing the, this is not a very large canvas. I'm sure we'll have time to get this thing done. You can see I'm softening my edges just with the knife also. Then I come back and forget too much on the knife. I just dry it off in a paper towel. So as you can see, if you're going to paint loose or impressionistic, I start from the very beginning doing this. And it's not bad. I don't think it, my blue's kind of dead. That's not that great of a color. Okay, enough of that. Let's bring this part one to an end. And I want to thank you all very much for coming by. Bye-bye.